anything about that. I'll tell you what I started playing again the other day. Uh, occasional, very fun game. Well, it's not, is it fun? Is that the right word? Not to say fun, it's, it's, um, it's an enjoyable, relaxing game to play. Ages ago, I had a couple of videos on gun disassembly. Now, this one's a, this one's an odd one. So this is it's the kind of game that has two, I think, sorts of people interested. A bit like the tank mechanic simulator, probably. You've got the people who are obsessed with guns. <laughs> no shortage of those around the world because it, what you okay? What, so a bit of framing in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, gun disassembly is exactly what it sounds like. You have a gun model on a screen, and then you take it apart. Because you know, every gun is a gun that you field strips, but also taken down its individual component parts to be cleaned. You know, and how it's assembled all together. And it's sort of interesting, in the same way that I found the tank mechanic simulator. Now all the, all the bits of the gun have their own purposes, and you start to recognise them. If you're not familiar with guns, you have to learn these things and recognise the parts, and you can... The, the, model, the, game, the model is very detailed. You can really see, and there are operation ones in there as well, where you can see how the thing actually goddamn works. And it's, for someone who's interested in mechanical processes and things like that, it, to me, it's it's pretty interesting. I, I, I enjoy it. I like to see how these things have been done. Especially when you've got the, of course, the novel ones, the ones where you've got something particularly small or particularly detailed that operates in a very specific way or, or unique weapons that have been designed in a particular way. So yeah, you've got the people like me who 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 are like the mechanics of it and the way it works and also the procedure of doing this, assembling and disassembling something, and then the nutters. <laughs> it's a bit of a broad classification. The people who like guns maybe a bit too much. You know, that seems to be the list of people. That like this game, but I, I do like it. I haven't played it again for a long time, but I used to. And the reason it, I, apart, apart from learning how these things happen, you, as you get more into the how this works, there are game modes where you have to do things like not strip it particularly quickly. You can do, but it's just taking it apart and put it back together in a particular order. And you have to remember how all the pieces go together. And part of understanding how something works gives you the clues in how you. Assemble and disassemble something. So it's a, it's, it's kind of a, it's a memory game. It's a memory game, is what it is. And I find it very relaxing. If I need to calm my mind for a bit, I take out all my guns and I strip them and polish them. No, I don't. Um, but I do what I was doing that day, which is the simple act of memorising something and then doing it perfectly. You know, and I find that very calming and relaxing. I haven't done this for a long time, but I've gone back to this thing. And it's uh, it's quite enjoyable. I do, I do, really quite enjoy. It. Also, if I get the wrong, if I get it the wrong time, I guess it frustrated. I have the, has the opposite effect. It annoys me. But if I, well, no, you don't. If I get it right, it's a very, it's a very enjoyable thing to do. To it could, be, it, I think it could be anything. I think if it was anything mechanical, I think if it was. I think it was any any mechanical device that was regular. Maybe it's I don't know. You can clocks apart. I know clocks aren't that different. They all they're all very similar. But anything that was mechanical like that, because a gun is a small machine. You know? Although of course things like the ones that are designed to fire automatically have their own again designs that allow them to happen. Things to happen again and again and again with just one trigger or multiple triggers. And again, that's you know it's fascinating. Again. I know I'm going on, but it's very enjoyable. I've been doing that, and uh, yes, yeah, just uh, enjoying the piece. I think people do it. I think it's the same thing that triggers in people who who like Candy Crush or anything else. It's um, mm, similar, I get. Yeah, okay. So we're saying like I brought the wrong thing up, haven't I? I should have really brought a bin up rather than the. Uh, rather than it's the same thing that you get from this game. Now this game is more automatic. Every time when you're doing something, you're you're not thinking too deeply about this game. You're doing the same procedures like mopping over and over again. Oh my god, there's so much blood in here. <laughs> I want a hose in here. Um, same thing over and over again. With the 
I think the way I enjoy the gun one more is because it obviously it changes. You know, for a while I spend time memorizing something, but then next time I next time I do I move on to something new. I've completed that one complete fully. I don't know, maybe variation there can be of doing the the challenges for this. Now I move on to something and it's slightly different each time, which is why I don't play things like Candy Crush because I wouldn't find that very very interesting every time. But it's a similar sort of thing. It's, uh, it's a different a different state of mind. Here it is. The brain is the brain is not it's not even elsewhere. You are concentrating, but you are concentrating. Let me think about how this works. You're concentrating in a in a different form. You're concentrating on something repeat something repetitious, but you're not. You're not thinking deeply about something. You're thinking hard about something that is complicated, but you're not thinking deeply. Is that right? I don't know. You're not, your brain is not wandering. See, I have, I have an issue with some things with brain wandering. I think I've probably mentioned this early on in some of my Vistra videos. I used to have a particular problem with long-term tasks that didn't require too much brain power. Driving being one of the classic ones. So, driving very long distances, as I want to do. Uh, well, not any, obviously not right now, but also not anymore, just because I've changed my role slightly and I, I travel differently. But anything where I've got long periods of time for my brain to do what it does, which is just to turn over. And in the past, that could be a problem. I would get myself in ruts. I would sometimes I have it with, actually when I'm walking the dog, but not so much anymore. I would have this thing where my brain would cycle, and it would come up with a novel idea. But sometimes that novel idea was negative, negative to me, negative something about me, something something I've done, just negative ideas, and I don't know. And it would it would go around in circles, and it wouldn't be healthy. And I until maybe quite a few I don't know years ago it was, I'm, I'm not sure, but quite a few years ago I finally broke out of this cycle, but for a long time I wouldn't really know when it was being, it was starting to become a negative cycle of thoughts, and therefore couldn't stop it, and that's the big break, is that I, I now recognise when that starts to happen, and I stopped it, and it became less and less, I've gone very deep this episode, but you know, this is, this is something I've gone over before, and I don't think I could do something that didn't involve my brain too much, like playing Candy Crush, because my brain would it would start to wander again, and there'd be more chances. I'd rather have my mind at partly for useful purposes, but also to keep away from those vicious cycles that I used to used to suffer from. There you go. What brain's your worst enemy? And again, I say these things because I know if there's only ever one person out there listening to this that, that recognises that, there's at least one person out there who recognises that. Because again, the more you think about things, the more you realise that your thoughts are not unique to you. It's amazing if they do. It'll possibly trouble, depending on what your thoughts are. <laughs> but generally speaking, you are... We're all similar enough that... Let's do something useful, by the way. We're all similar enough that... Thoughts that have occurred to one of us... Have occurred to, a, occurred to many. Ah, oh, that's too big. Legs too big! No, no, no. Is there a PID? I only saw one PID. There must be another PID in here somewhere. So we can get all the shell casings in here. Someone had a real field day in here, didn't they? This was a real... This was a real bit of a bugger. This is about maximum blood that could be squeezed into this map. Thank you, creators. That's great. Um, <laughs> maximum blood that could be squeezed into this area. Because how many buckets have I gone through now? Eight? I don't know. A lot. Rather wearing, to say the least. But even so, we're getting there, we're getting there. Of course you know... Helpful game. Uh, <laughs> of course you know the, the perfect answer for someone who something knows how to relax and, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. And that is, of course, the dog. Uh, I guess probably cats and other animals as well. But my best experience is with dogs. So, going with that a bit further. So just the, 
just the simple things in life. I mean, for example, the other day, in the garden, it was the weekend, and I was tidying up some of the bits in the garden. And when I built the cabin, I'm just going to have more bits in here. I had a bunch of pieces left over, not in a bad way, not like you've taken the toaster apart and now you've got bits left over and it doesn't toast things anymore, it, um, it grills them, I don't know, it does the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, not that sort of thing that's left over, spare bits that weren't needed for various things about how I'd built this thing differently to how it could, the various ways it could have been built. You know, panels and boards and things like that, and I'd stuffed them under a tarp outside to be to be used again at some point, you know, they'd be useful for something else. So this nice little wood pile. The wood's still good under there, it's not nicely protected, but I am um, I forget by the way. Because I will forget that. There we go. The uh, lovely for other creatures as well. Things like you know, things like spiders and mice and other things love a good wood pile. And if it isn't like uh, like logs or whatever else. It's, it, you know, it's a great place to, to be sheltered. Come on, me. You can do it. Be sheltered and uh, potentially, you know, find cocks and things in there. And the dog loves the wood pile because he's a terrier. And therefore, he is hunting for whatever squeaky things are living in there. And he found one rat dropping. We're, we're near the school, so he uh, there are rats around. And there have been some living in the house before now. Not in the house. In the back garden. Not in the house. Thankfully not. Um, but near the house before now. And they do pass through occasionally. There was one rat dropping. And of course the smell is there. So he has gone nuts. And he's he's dug himself into this wood pile. Come on. Give me a break. There's a lot of organs coming out of this machine, really are, a lot. An excessive number. Not as bad as the bin dispenser, the bin dispensers are always worse. But, still annoying. Um, also, why are we here? Oh, I haven't done the sweep, I still haven't found the broom, have I? Gotta find the broom in a minute. Once I finish this room, we will find a broom somewhere. And sweep up in that room down there. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, he was having a way of the time. He smelt something in there, whether it was still there or not. You know, he's going to search in there for hours. He's got a little backside in there, and he's uh, he's buried himself right in there to the point where he can't actually turn around to get out again. And he doesn't actually care. He's just so happy in there, rolling around trying to find. Oh, you! Um. Just a chance of finding something squeaky in there that you can get in there and you get a friendly shake by his neck. Uh, <laughs> whale of a time. Just so much fun and filthy dirty in there after a while. Um, this was where he, um, he'd also, when building the cabin, it had like, it was on, uh, built on like boards, like supporting boards and then weed proof membrane on there to stop things growing through under the cabin. And it, um, um, at some point there was a wood pile again near there for something else like waste wood that had been cut up for the garden and there had been things living in there and he smelt something in there and he went digging around around this place for ages and I was doing other things on the cabin I was saying, I haven't seen the dog for a while can't find him, can't find him and I was worried because he could at that point he could get across the next door and he could invade next door's garden and that's that's a bad thing we may, we may not have many guns in the uk but uh people get pretty upset if dogs invade their garden too much if they're not a doggy person so he would get in next door so i was like oh god he, he's over there again is the little bugger he's hunting around i couldn't find him i couldn't find him i got worried i thought maybe if he's gone over the fence he's gotten all the way towards the road and like he's seen a fox or something and the, or a squirrel and the, the the red mist has come down and he's gone you know, he's buggered off over there, and I, at one point, I, one of my kids was here, and I had him go out to the road, and I searched, and I searched, and I could not find where he was. And then suddenly I had this weird thought. Because I was yelling and yelling, and I, I'd gone, like, like, an, like an adult, looking for their child. I'd gone from the angry to then to the pleading, and then back to the angry again. 
And of course, when you find them, you are angry. Because they're like, what the hell have you been? I'm so ups happy to see you, smack. You know, because <laughs> yeah, the emotions overload. Um, but I, I was, I, I, you know, he's probably scared because he'd heard my voice and didn't want to come out. But also, he couldn't come out. Because where he was, was under the weedproof membrane. Okay, and I don't know how he got on there, but this thing was pretty tight to the ground. And he was basically a lump under a wood membrane. And a peep, and a set of wood in a partially built cabin that would never be moved. Okay, you could not move this. If you had five strong guys, you could not have moved this. And he was basically a lump under the membrane. They couldn't get out. And I've been looking, and I saw this weird lump. I was like, what the heck is that? And I was poking around, and that, like, this lump is rather squidgy. I know what it must be. This stupid dog has got himself stuck under here. And eventually, we proved member is both so insecure. I got my standing knife out and I cut. I very carefully excised the dog from under the, under the membrane. And I dragged him out by the scruff of his neck. Absolutely filthy. And what he'd done, obviously. Is he'd smelt or sensed a mouse or something under there, and he'd gone hair on his way under there, and then couldn't get back out, and then probably didn't want to get out because he heard how angry his dad was. So, <laughs> but that's what I mean. Just the simplest pleasure in life, just hunting for something that your your very instinct says that you should do. You know, and that's what he's done. He's, he's bred into him. He's got. He can't help. It. He must hunt the squeaky things. You know. Oops, that's what he does. You! That might be doing that. That's disgusting. Right, okay. There we go. Well, I guess the uh, the serum must have run out or something, whatever they were injecting these guys with. Otherwise, you'd think they're dead, therefore, they should be getting up if they were being. Uh, Injected with stuff. And we got, what do we need upstairs? We need much more of this, probably. There's wet stuff. Oh, I'll just serve up the dinner for the kids. Didn't make it. My wife made it. Tandoori style chicken. Chicken quarters. With homemade chips. Oh, in here, aren't we? Homemade fries. And let's get you off of there, fella. Oh, you could be stuck. Uh-oh. Oh, we got you. I've got you. Out we go. What's up, we have it? Let's have a look at you. Have you got like have you got a mask on? No, well, I thought for a second I could see like a like a basic medical mask. Oh, no, I can't, no, no. A weird weird lighting effect. You've made a mess on the stairs, haven't you now? Yeah, homemade fries. Plus salad and carrot sticks. I'm actually quite hungry. Usually I'm going to eat this early. Usually I eat later in the evening after I've... No mess? No? After I walk the dog. But I'm starting to get a bit hungry. Probably mostly boredom. It is. It's not real hunger. Well, no, it probably is hungry. Most of the hunger during the day is not real hunger. It's just being at home, the opportunity to snack, therefore I can. I will. Can snack, will snack. That kind of problem. 